There are only enough entry-level actuarial positions that only about 27% of exam P passers will be able to get one. So, are you going to be one of the 27%? Are you doing everything that you need to be doing now so that eventually you will be able to get an actuarial job? Well, after working with thousands of future actuaries, I've discovered that there are really three key elements that you need to be doing in order to make sure you stand out to actuarial employers. So let's talk about them. By the way, I'm Bria, Associate of the Society of Actuaries and Actuarial Career Coach. A while ago, I did a study of 100 entry-level actuarial jobs to really get a sense of the trends in what actuarial employers are looking for. And we're actually doing a new version of that study right now, so keep your eyes tuned for the results. So from that study, I actually learned that there are five key qualifications that actuarial employers are asking for again and again. One of those is a bachelor's degree. About 95% of employers wanted an actuarial candidate with a bachelor's degree. 85% wanted someone that had great technical skills. 75% wanted great communication skills. 74% wanted at least one exam passed. And 56% wanted someone with relevant experience. Now, if you have all five of these qualifications, then you are a top candidate in terms of your qualifications. An example of this is Denise. She was a prior member of the Actuary Accelerator community and ended up getting four job offers. She had been working as a teacher prior to joining the Actuary Accelerator community and this was experience that employers really valued because it proved that she had great mathematical skills and also that she was able to break down complex topics and make them easily understandable by someone that doesn't know as much as she does. She also learned technical skills as part of her time in the Actuary Accelerator community. She did courses and lots of actuarial projects that helped her take what she learned in the projects and apply them to real world situations. And this is something that you're going to need to do in an actuarial role. And Denise had lots of practice doing that through these projects. She also had a bachelor's degree before she got into the AAC. I'll link to Denise's interview down below in the description, but what I've learned from her and so many other successful future actuaries is that if you don't have all of these qualifications, it's going to be extremely difficult to get an actuarial job because there are so many people that are striving to become the ideal candidate. Probably lots of them are watching this specific YouTube channel. So employers have tons of candidates that meet the requirements and often exceed them. Now, you might have all the best qualifications for an actuarial position, but actually getting that employer to interview you and give you a chance is one of the biggest struggles I've seen so many future actuaries run into. Imagine you're going to buy a car and the salesperson hands you the keys to a car and says, here, this one used to be green, but now it's red. And the previous owner used to wash it every single Sunday morning. Do you care? Does that impact your decision to purchase the vehicle? No, probably not. He needs to tell you the things that you are actually going to care about. And I see the same sort of thing happen on actuarial resumes. A lot of the time they contain a lot of information, but oftentimes it doesn't contain all the information that employers really need to know. And there's a lot of additional information that they don't need to know. Creating a resume might seem like common sense. You might think that you're giving the employers what they need. You just fill in a template with all the information, right? Well, template or not, I still very often see formatting issues on the resumes of future actuaries, and I've reviewed hundreds of them. Almost always there's inconsistent formatting or the structure of the resume just doesn't make good readability for the employers. Assuming you have top candidate level qualifications, I'm very confident that you will be able to get an actuarial job if I look at your resume and it has these key factors. One is that it's formatted well with a career profile at the top that summarizes what makes you a great candidate for the position in a very succinct way. Two is that the experience section is written in a way that impresses actuarial employers, not necessarily written to impress employers in your previous line of work. Three is that you've really demonstrated your qualifications well. For example, if you have great technical skills, you talk about the courses, you talk about the actuarial projects that you've done, you talk about how you've used it in the workplace. Four is that everything on your resume helps to prove you are a better candidate for this particular position. And five is that it's free of grammatical errors, formatting issues, and typos. If you do what I'm going to tell you next, combined with what I've already shared with you, then your chances of getting an actuarial job are going to skyrocket. Your resume will get you the interview, 
but your interview gets you the job. And this is an area that I really struggled with because I was so uncomfortable having a conversation. And it often led to me coming off as not confident. This is something that so many future actuaries struggle with and it's often because we tend to have a very introverted personality. Here's what changed it for me and this is not a quick fix and it might seem a little bit intuitive but a lot of people still don't do it. And it's practice. Once I started creating YouTube videos and doing tons of live sessions for you and other future actuaries, my ability to talk confidently and answer questions on the spot, it skyrocketed over time. Now, obviously making YouTube videos might not be something you want to do now, but you can still record yourself in front of a camera and watch it back. You have to make sure you're doing it all in one take with no redos because in an interview you wouldn't get to try answering questions again and again and you just have to make sure you're doing everything like you would in a real interview. That way when you watch it back you can get some real insight into things like are you speaking confidently? Are you articulating your thoughts clearly? Are you making sure to highlight all the great qualifications you have that make you an ideal candidate for the position? Not sure which questions to ask? Well, go to ChatGBT and ask it to give you 10 interview questions that might be asked during an actuarial interview for entry-level candidates. Go through those questions one by one and don't look at all the questions before you start the interview. Make sure you're looking at each question as it comes up, just like you'd be given questions in a regular interview. I often find that teachers are very good at this interviewing part because they've done this over and over and over again. They're very comfortable talking to large audiences, they're comfortable answering questions on the spot, and they're able to articulate their thoughts really well. So for teachers, I often find that if they get those extra qualifications and they have a great actuarial resume, the interview part comes easy for them and they have a high chance of getting a job. Now, after you've recorded yourself, review the videos and see if there are any parts that stand out to you that are a bit weaker, areas that you can improve. And then practice, practice, practice. You have to do this in order to get better. Otherwise, you're going to have a harder time getting an actuarial job. If you're not sure which areas you need to work on, then talk to someone that you trust, a parent, a friend, someone that can give you feedback that is honest, and that's where you can improve on your interviewing skills. Of all three of these things, the resume is often the most difficult part to do on your own. And it's typically the thing that holds future actuaries back from getting their first job. Is it possible that you need to make some improvements to your resume? Maybe there are things that you need to include or add that you aren't even aware of. To find out, go watch this video next.